This is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. On tap, we've got what should be a fairly intriguing matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and the Minnesota Vikings. With that, we send you up to U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Standing by our commentator, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the San Francisco 49ers. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. The Vikings send out the rookie fifth rounder, Daniel Carlson, to get us started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. <laughs> He's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. They're brought out by their fifth-year QB out of Eastern Illinois. It's Jimmy Garoppolo. And he put his time in New England to really good use while he was there. Obviously not the starter with Tom Brady there, but he observed Brady every day, learned every nuance of the offense, and every week during the season, the Patriots would give him a chance to run the game plan of that week's game in practice so he would get real big-time reps, and he's translated that on his next move to San Francisco. Now a play fake here on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. The intended receiver, Marquise Goodwin. And that'll bring up second down. A glance at the 11 on offense here for San Francisco. And the 49ers, some are calling a sleeper team after the great end of last year. A lot of momentum into this season, but they've had some injury issues early on. They certainly have. George Kittle's been having a tremendous training camp. Has separated shoulder in their first preseason game. Running backs Jarek McKinnon and Matt Breida have been dinged up a little bit as well. So the Niners went out and signed Alfred Morris on August the 13th trying to supplement their running backs. But the defensive side, they've had some issues there as well. Richard Sherman with a hamstring issue. And Eric Armstead's been dinged up a little bit. Solomon Thomas, their first-round pick last year. They expect all of them back for the season opener. But it has made their training camp a little bit more unsettled. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said right down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it'll be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. here on first down the first catch of the game for George Kittle and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory another nice gain 16 yards there and a first down again well coaches always talk about finding balance on offense I don't think you can get much more balance than this big time run Big time pass. A one-two combination look pretty good. How about that? They, it, it, let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch though. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and ten at the 46. Here we go. Here we go. There's Garoppolo on first and ten. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete, and this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. And the big meet on the D-line, we'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Hey, hey. Go, go. 
second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now McKinnon. He'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. One of my favorite safeties in the league is Harrison Smith. His ability to support in the run game, as we just saw there, that's key, but also can cover deep as well. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. Oh, a ball battled in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked up by Harrison Smith. And he will take this across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception throw. And that last one, that hurts. to take over again. Cousins. And his first look is incomplete. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. First carry for their fullback. Got a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. And that was a good chunk of yardage picked up there, and the big fella, sometimes he doesn't need a whole lot of space created. He can make his own way. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. The first carry now for Dalvin Cook. And a little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be from 56 yards out. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. So here comes a 49er offense yet again. Let's discuss the 49er running game while they trot out there. Carlos Hyde is, of course, gone. He's now in Cleveland. What do you make of the backfield as we move into 2018? A little bit jumbled right now here in the preseason because of a lot of injuries. Jerick McKinnon, who came over from Minnesota, expected to be their lead back. He's dinged up, will not play the rest of the preseason. Neither will Matt Breida nor Joe Williams, all of them out of action. So right now, the top two runners Raheem Mostert and Jeremy McNichols. McNichols from Boise State was with Tampa for a while last year before signing with the 49ers. And Mostert, as a kid, offered a surfing contract at one point before becoming an NFL running back. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I 
know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. up a tough third and 12. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Here we go, here we go. Throwing his Garoppolo on third down. He's going to float this one deep right side and almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And out now come the Vikings. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. the play fake. Cousins. Let's it fly for Thielen. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes inbounds there. A gain of 39 that time. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 41. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. First down, here's the run with Cook. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Malcolm Smith there for the stop. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. 
Didn't happen on that play. On second down, Cook. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Solomon Thomas there on the tackle. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Inside the 20 at the 19. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard at its fourth. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. The kick by Carlson is good. And the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. So he gets an early chance to redeem himself, and he's able to put that one through. And how happy is he? He's able to get that second chance so quickly after the first miss. Gets his confidence back up, and who knows? They may need him for an even bigger kick later in the game. After the made field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And it winds up a terrific return, but markers are down. And this is going to come all the way back. Holding, receiving team. So holding will scratch off down. some of that return. And I know fans get frustrated when they see penalties of this sort on kick returns, but it is difficult to do it right against these moving targets at full speed. Hard to do. Let's get the call. Holding offense. So that one a hold to the right guard. Down. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Now Garoppolo on the bootleg. Got his target, Pierre Garçon. 18 yards to pick up there. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. And this is going to be incomplete. Trey Waynes, the Michigan State man, right there in coverage. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. 
He just acted like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Garoppolo looking to throw on third and two. They're able to find Garcon. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good for a Niner first down. Garoppolo to Garcon. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. We see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now a play fake, Garoppolo, and incomplete on the deep ball. Trent Taylor, the one he was looking for, and it's second down. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from it. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. Back to the air on second. It's Garoppolo. And Garrett Seneth here on the completion. And he's brought down. 11 more yards there. And this methodical drive continues. And this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route. Able to look it in and picks up the first down. Garoppolo, 5 out of 10, 50% throwing it. Not so hot, but he does have a first down. By 20, back 80. Throwing on first is Garoppolo. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, Tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. yourself thinking okay we're gonna get a gain here now you've got to go back in reverse come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost but gain a few extra here again is McCannon and he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter so just a lone field goal in this first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company.
Second quarter now. Brandon God and Charles Davis with you. It's the 49ers in control of the football. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. Those are the touchdowns that aren't just scored on Sundays or on Monday night. Those are the ones that are scored during the week because they had that preparation in a great route run. Oh, I love that observation because you don't just roll out on game day and say, okay, go run this route and let's get it done. That means exactly what you said. The practice had to occur beforehand, which led to the timing, which led to the touchdown. Robbie Gold on for the extra point. Gold able to tack on the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. Now the Vikings now heading on to the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. <laughs> they start the drive with Cook. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Again, it's Cook. Only a couple there. So he'll be brought down about the 28. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Cousins from the gun on third. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there and gets the good defensive position, able to affect the play. And Quigley now on to punt as he sends this one away. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. I know there's no magnet in the ball, but sometimes for the punt returner, after such a scramble, it sort of feels that way, doesn't it? He has it, he loses it, 
Somehow, the ball finds his way back to him. Atone for his sin, and you know he's taking a deep sigh of relief right now. Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Breda. The tackle made there by Linval Joseph. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Here's McKinnon. Room here to run. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. It's Garoppolo. Wide open receiver complete. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A good pick up there of 22. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Garoppolo on first down. And it's intercepted. Picked up by Harrison Smith. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, we progressed through the preseason, so let's prognosticate about the regular season. NFC. Can we overanalyze? Yeah, I want to overanalyze, too. NFC, the four divisions, who do you have winning them? Let's start in the East. The Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl last year, got better in the offseason. I think they win their division again, although Dallas will make a strong run at them. Okay. In the South, you were saying you like Atlanta. Yeah, I do like Atlanta to get back to the top. Tough division. Three teams in the playoffs last year. Atlanta, New Orleans, which won the division, and Carolina. Going west, who do you have out there? The Rams. They took over for the Seahawks last year. I expect them to stay on the top of the heap. But let's face it, a lot of excitement in San Francisco with Jimmy Garoppolo. And <laughs> in the north, can Green Bay overtake Minnesota? They can, but I don't think that they will. I think the Vikings defense carries them home. Kirk Cousins, their new quarterback. The Packers will challenge in a big way. They'll keep an eye on Detroit as well. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. Tackle that time by Jarquiski Tart. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one who has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The Vikings on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Got him in, it's right. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. One of the selling points at the in route is against the quarterback. A really nice sight line to his receiver. 
and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. now Cousins blitz coming and down he goes DeForest Buckner with a great push up front he picks up the sack at a loss of eight and plays like that really hurt play calling they had a really nice gain on the previous play but gave about half the yardage back on the sack excellent pressure up front nowhere to go with the football down he goes Gotta imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Cousins now on second down. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38 yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage. When you see a play like that, where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big time play by the defense. From the gun, here's Cousins. Trying for right, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Jack Whiskey Tarry. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. San Francisco's offense back onto the field. And take a moment to acknowledge the passing of Dwight Clark, one of the great ones back in June, and the Niners announced that this year they're going to wear number 87 logo on their helmets. A fitting tribute. A fitting tribute indeed. One of the all-time greats for the San Francisco 49ers. And I often think how they saw him and got him on the team. And it was very simply this. Former coach Bill Walsh went to work out a quarterback named Steve Fuller at Clemson and he needed someone to catch the ball, and they got Dwight Clark off the golf course to catch the football for him, and Coach Walsh walked away thinking, he might have something with this wide receiver, and the rest is history. And of course, he had the catch, and they're gonna put a statue of that outside the stadium before their October 21st game. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there, freezing the defense just enough Spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Hey, go down, go down. Here we go. Now it's Breda. Ben Gideon in on the stop. Four six defense. They were daring him to run the football. They ran it. But a little football 101. Take us through what the 4-6 defense is, Charles. So what you're trying to do with your big defensive front is cover the interior offensive line when the center and the two guards and make it difficult if you even want to think about running the ball inside. If you can control them, that allows the linebackers and the safeties to run free and get to the ball carriers. And that play worked really well. No game. Call it no game there, and it leads to a fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Robbie Gold on now to try the field goal. Spotted at the left, hash this from 45. And Gold is able to put it through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. They got the interception, but very little movement after.
after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it, it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but... They need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people. Find some other playmakers. But always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And complete right side to Cook. Yeah, they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches. And they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space. Let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Cousins now 6 of 10 in this first half. He's got his guys a first down here. Cousins now to throw on first down. To the sideline, and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. It'll be a gain of 9, and that'll make it second and short. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Second down, Cousins. His throw incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph, and it's third and short. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Vikings on third down. Just one for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. He'll get it to the 40. Sweet little move in there, but couldn't get much yardage out of it. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play.
Play action. Cousins. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. DeForest Buckner in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Well, nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. They go play action. Cousins. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Here's Ryan Quigley now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And boy, it's another boomer. Out on the field now. Here come the 49ers. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Here's Garoppolo on first and ten. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, hey, we got to get in the AFC Week 1 talk. We talked about the NFC and what to look forward to on their schedule, but there's some great AFC games as well. And many people believe the AFC West is as good a division as there is in the NFL. How about this for an opener? The Kansas City Chiefs headed to take on the Los Angeles Chargers. Patrick Mahomes, the new quarterback for KC has to deal with the pass rush of Joey Bosa of Melvin Ingram of the Los Angeles Chargers. And a second one that catches my eye is Houston at New England. The Texans always trying to measure themselves against the Patriots. Now they get back to Sean Watson. They get back J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless, and they take on the defending AFC champs in Foxborough. And one crossover game that's pretty interesting. How about Jacksonville against the Giants? What I like about that one is you have a Jacksonville team that came so close to getting to the Super Bowl last year, but they and the Giants have a similar philosophy about how to play the game. They're going to be physical. They want to run the football. So Leonard Fournette for Jacksonville and the rookie for the Giants, Saquon Barkley, they could both get a lot of carries in that game. And last but not least in that one, how about Pittsburgh at Cleveland? People don't think about that game very much, but this has been the summer of the Cleveland Browns in preseason where Baker Mayfield actually hit the field. And can Cleveland start a new era with a big win over Pittsburgh? Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Here's Kirk Cousins now, the centerpiece of our player spotlight. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it's struggle. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Cousins on first down. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 12 yards there as they move the chains. 
First down now, but that clock rolling. On first and ten, Cousins. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, CD, in a couple of weeks we can make our Super Bowl predictions, but for right now, I want to get your AFC Division Champion predictions. Who do you have? All right, let's start in the AFC East. It's New England. Do we need to say any more? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's a challenger behind them in that division right now. That tends to cover it. Miami believes that they can be. Buffalo will be starting over with a new quarterback. So will the Jets. How about the AFC South? I'm going to give you a surprise there. I think Houston comes back and reclaims their crown and moves ahead of Jacksonville and Tennessee, who were both in the playoffs last year. The good health of Deshaun Watson, J.J. Watt, Whitney Merciless, Houston in a surprise pick. All right, how about... The West. The West is always intriguing. Who are you taking there? One of the better divisions in football. John Gruden's back in Oakland. Kansas City has a new quarterback in Patrick Mahomes. Denver has a new quarterback in Case Keenan, plus a terrific defense. But I think the L.A. Chargers ride away with mm. this division crown. Phillip Rivers has to get it done. Somewhat approaching the twilight of his career. And I love their pass rush with Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. And in the north, I'm guessing you're going Steelers. I think I have to go the Pittsburgh Steelers. Everyone else has big question marks. The Steelers have big men, and they're really upset about the way 2017 ended when they lost to Jacksonville in the playoffs. Cousins now 10 of 16 throwing the football. It's first and 10. First down. Here's Cousins. To the sideline. And wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. To the air again, it's Cousins. And that's off the mark, incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave them trying to convert on third and nine. Cousins. Cook able to escape, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Now, he's been a busy man out of the backfield. They've looked his way quite a bit so far in this game. Nice job there defensively, though, adjusting, because a couple of his earlier catches, he was wide open. Not that time. You mentioned the key word, adjustment. A better cover man on him now in space. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good, and this score will stay right where it is. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement, so now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and 10. First down, Garoppolo. And Selleck here, left side. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half.
Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Second down, here's Garoppolo. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout. And now they get set to line up as we resume action. seconds to go in this first half. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Garoppolo again here on second and ten. To the right side, complete to Taylor. They'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you <laughs> move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Throwing is Garoppolo on third down. 20. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 34. And Gold is able to put it through. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that. We haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. to the 24. 
That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting 49ers on top. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL and give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Here comes Sheryls. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But oh, this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We're going to see if that script is a good one for them. Starting the third quarter with Cook. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. They run it again with Cook. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. The Vikings on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. They're up against a third and one situation. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. second let's talk rookie running backs obviously the headliners Saquon Barkley but there's a lot of good other backs in this class are there not there certainly are and there was a surprise first round pick to many people out of San Diego State named Rashad Penny who went to Seattle they're trying to recreate that strong running game that they had that powered them to two Super Bowl appearances how about Royce Freeman in Denver a big time pickup by the University of Oregon. They expect him to be the lead runner when the season begins. He'll get every opportunity to do that. Carry on Johnson in Detroit, out of Auburn. They haven't had a running game since I can't remember. And they need to take some pressure off of Matthew Stafford. Maybe Carry on Johnson could power him that way. How about a couple below the radar guys? Chris Warren is leading the NFL in rushing after two weeks undrafted out of Texas, running the ball well for Oakland. And if John Kelly can step in and give him some good play in Los Angeles, 
They've got great insurance for Todd Gurley, who, of course, is their lead back. A lot of good ones. Of course, the class would have been even better had Darius Geis not gone down with that ACL injury. Tough break for Washington. Back to the ground. Cook. And he'll be taken down at the 33. A pickup of about four. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? to Cook. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits, and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Give. This is Cook. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Brandon, we're into the second half, and this offense has not scored a lot of points, and that was another example of why. I think it's time to open things up and start really trying to move the ball. The Vikings on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This time it's third and three. We're working out of the gun. Cousins drops it underneath to Thomas. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. They'll try to run it in with Murray. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Now a second down throw for Cousins, and that's going to be incomplete. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost, and now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Now you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. So the false start will back them up five. False start, offense. 
You expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. A bad time for a false start penalty as they're backed up now for third and goal. Third and goal for Cousins. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. He loses four, and it brings up fourth. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. Daniel Carlson now for the Viking field goal. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. Carlson able to put this one through. And they will cut the lead back down to a touchdown now at 13-6. To well, that will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So, some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. What did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick. But that type of a drive should end in the end zone. After the made field goal, Carl Sinell sets up to kick this away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. And the first play of the drive goes to McKinnon. And not a whole lot doing there. So he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Making the stop there, Daniil Hunter. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. takes it across the 40-yard line. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. He gets this up to the 48-yard line. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. like right at the 50. Call it a gain of three, and that'll make it third down. Was that a receiver? 
<laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. at this point going to make that defense stand up and stop him. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. The Niners on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and five. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. That'll put him at 77 yards receiving for the ball game. It's a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's going to get it inside the 10 to the 7-yard line. A nice run there, 9 yards, and it'll be second down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. will come inside the five at the four. They give them two yards there as they're set up now with a first and goal. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's 49er football here. They've got the lead as well as we get set to start the fourth and final quarter.
So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They'll try to run with McKinnon. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in. Oh, no, he lost the football. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Gold is able to put it through. And that one makes this a 10-point game at 16-6. to six. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game. His third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense... You get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? The putter pinion now to kick this one away. Here comes Sheryls. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. That hold coming from the left so side of the line. Down. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. From the gun, here's Cousins. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. 
Cousins now on second down. Pressure gets to it, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. DeForest Buckner getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. On the ground, it's Cook. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. 14 yards, but they're still well shy of the first as that leads to fourth down. This offense really put themselves in a tough spot on first and second down and needing long yardage to try and pick up a first down. And they ended up getting a great run. Explosive, picked up nice yardage. You don't expect to be in this situation on fourth down. But guess what? It all started with what happened on first and second down. Really put them behind the eight ball. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. <laughs> Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. The San Francisco offense getting their last-minute instructions before they take over here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> now Garoppolo. That's to the right side. Complete to kill it. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Sometime in this fourth quarter, someone on defense is going to have to step up and force a turnover. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. Over the middle to Garcon. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. 83 yards receiving now for him on the afternoon as he's got a first down here. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Garoppolo now. Six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Now McKenna. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock now meanwhile a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete i think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there you've got a lead you've got to protect it and he's taking chances putting it out there and a little bit of jeopardy especially in a spot like this fourth quarter as you said trying to cling to that advantage yeah that one probably should have been picked huh From the gun on third, Garoppolo. He's going to walk this one deep left sideline. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. 
But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for San Francisco. This is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. And as the numbers show, he really wasn't in the mix at the beginning, but they've got him in the rotation now, and it's proved a good move. And that's what happens when you're a good player. There's a lot more attention drawn to you, and it's obvious that they had him in their game plan on defense, not letting him get off to a good start, but he's found a way so far here in the second half. and 10. Cousins. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And a great move on the play as he takes this one past the 25. Call it a pickup of seven, and it's a second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. carry it's caught and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here three yards there good enough to keep the drive moving now yes a two possession game but a good chunk of time on the clock so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short but maybe they need to pick it up a bit you're right they did pick up the first down there but they, as you mentioned they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two possession game they've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win Cousins on first down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It's a gain of seven, and that'll make this a second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Second down, Cousins. And his throw here is incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver, and it's third and short. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Third and short yardage, Cousins. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. Cousins to his tight end, Rudolph, for a Viking first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified. Big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Cousins now to throw on first down. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. On second down, Cousins again. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. It's a gain of six on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack 
is a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense again it's cousins and this is going to be incomplete I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He's going to... Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Richard Sherman. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. On fourth down, that turned out like a punt. Maybe he was better defensively there just to knock it down. And you know they go over those situations. All right, fourth down. Where's the ball? Where would we get the ball? But instinct takes over, and when it's in the air, they just go and get it. So it's hard to get on him for intercepting it, but the smart play would have been what you suggested. Knock it down and take over in a deeper position. And San Francisco gets set to go here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. to the INT. It's Garoppolo. And Selleck here, left side. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Where they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Second down, here's Garoppolo. Over the middle to Kittle, complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. The Niners on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This time they face a third and two. And they'll go on the ground. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The pickup of 11, and it moves the chains. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win.
And they'll run him here. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Try the ground game here with the running back. And he's going to be met at about the 43. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. They'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. This is Breda. That'll be good for six, but now it's fourth down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So with that miss, Charles, you have to figure their fate. It might be sealed. Yeah, you needed two scores. So you take the field goal first and then worry about getting the ball back. But that may not matter now. And now out comes Minnesota. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again, but they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly, then they'll take it from there. So a good starting field position for him here as they come up first and ten. Here's Cousins. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. That one goes for 24 yards. And with the clock ticking under 50 seconds now, he spikes it.
Cousins to throw. He's going to let it fly. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Try to get it all back with one big shot right there, but even if successful, that doesn't get them all the way back to where they need to be. Can't totally abandon throwing the ball underneath as well. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It's a gain of five on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that one in. Complete as it stops the clock, reading 18 seconds to go. Well, they had to take one final shot at the end zone, but now things are looking really bleak. And I agree with that totally. You had to take the shot if they did score. You know, whether you call it a miracle or not, you line up, onside kick, get the ball back, throw one more in the end zone, who knows? Had to take the chance, it just was unsuccessful. And San Francisco gets set to go here. The clock cannot be stopped here. Defense can't do anything. So, kneel it down, take it home. No doubt about it. It's what you practice for in winning situations each and every week. Victory formation. Take a knee and go on into the locker room and celebrate. Call it a victory. And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. So the ref makes a call. No touchdown there. Wipe it off the board. Down to a knee for the 49ers. This one about to be on ice. Football League, Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.